Welcome to my channel and welcome to my garage, complete with crickets, or at least one cricket. So, apparently the same plague that plagued Gary Busey back in 1960-something is also plaguing me. I gotta go find him, because I've already shot like five minutes of wonderful video that I can't even show you, because... Just, it's just, I'm pretty sure he's saying, let me out. If you could just let me out. I want to be back outside where there's grass and dirt and things and sunshine and moonlight. So I'm going to go find him and then we're going to get back into design stuff, and puppets, and guitars, archery. I don't know, whatever we're going to talk about. So to start with, I'm going to wheel out my work benches. Which is also where the mount for my camera is. And my camera mount is a little wobbly. Now, I don't think that you are actually interested in helping me clean up the garage. But you're gonna. Because, you know, you don't get to... Eat the cake if you didn't help the little red hen to crack the eggs and sip the flour and mix the batter and all that stuff. Currently, there's a mess in there, especially right over in here. Lots of stuff. We're gonna go find the cricket. Too much competing noise from the outside, so I'm going to close the door so I can find him, maybe. I think we found him. I think he's in one of those two big boxes. Admittedly, there's a lot of bird noise for me to compete with, but when I brought those two boxes outside, I didn't hear it anymore. The needle in the haystack. He's right there, people. I found the cricket. Oh, also, I found the first puppet I ever made, which is a Kermit the Frog. That is actually glue that seeped through. Sorry, Pasha, I didn't know. I didn't know. And this was my first puppet head ever made oh it's a pretty sad looking kermit the frog wouldn't you say <laughs> but hey i was trying actually like if you look inside it's like a whole it's i didn't even know the kermit the frog didn't have foam in him but there's like i took a hunk of foam and carved out a hole to make my kermit hey you live and you learn. So this is my current frog. Hi ho, this is Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like I'm wearing lipstick. <laughs> but hey, you know what? We don't have a cricket anymore. So I can start the show. Woo! And quality base here. Quality base. One small step for man. been swept up and cleaned out and there's no crickets to be found so 
What are we doing on our inaugural video on Mike's YouTube channel? Well, I thought I would take you guys through one of my design projects from start to finish. And this project is another puppet. I have many puppets that are currently in progress. I have a mongoose puppet. I have a mini replica of uh, Jim Henson's Sweetums. Um, but also, so this summer we have, I say we, uh, there's a puppet workshop that I normally attend in Texas in the summer. And we're not going to be able to do it because we're all quarantined. So what we've decided to do is we're going to have an online convention, which is awesome. And part of that is we're going to build our puppets, which we normally do at our convention. We have uh, half of our convention is building puppets and the other half is learning how to perform with those puppets. So fortunately, our builder friend, Pasha Romanowski, who owns and operates Project Puppet Online, which you should go check out because it's an awesome place to get patterns and get started learning how to make puppets. He has given us for free this lovely pattern of this lovely cool little guy that I made out of this plain fleece, uh, just so I could see the pattern. It kind of helps me get an idea for uh, what the theme of this year is, which is Mini Monster. And this is the shape of our Mini Monster. This is one of two face patterns. One has a pointy nose like this guy. Hi. And the other one has a less pointy version, I guess, which would be, you know, something more like that-ish. I don't know, kind of a, has kind of a Kermit kind of feel, but he's just a, a cute little puppet. I mean, he's kind of tiny little mouth. He kind of looks like uh, one of the spice worms from Frank Herbert's Dune. But anyway. <laughs> so, um... So yeah, so part of our process when we start this is trying to figure out what kind of puppet we're going to build. And normally it starts with a piece of paper. Uh, this time I didn't start out with a piece of paper. I just started out with my brain and I was thinking uh, fuzzy monster. Fuzzy monster. Little fuzzy monster. And, you know, since... Uh, Normally, all of our supplies are provided for us at the workshop, so I had to go with the supplies that I have on hand, which are numerous, but still I have to make choices. And what I decided was, I came across this. And what this is, it's a ratty brown fur that I tried to dye darker than what I originally had. I was gonna make a Rolf the Dog uh, puppet, but what I found out in the process is it's really hard to dye a synthetic fur, which is what this is. Uh, it's better to just purchase the fur, the color that you want it. Uh, so as a result, I have a very splotchily dyed or re-dyed fur that I thought, hmm, I could use that. I could use that. And the first thought was I could build I can make a little uh, Jim Henson Sweetums model, which I thought would be adorable, like a three foot tall version. I thought would be cute. But also for my uh, Beyond the Sock project, I thought, hey, you know, it would be cute. And also terrifying is like, make like, um, like a, a dust bunny, like an evil dust bunny. Like I saw like this cute little dust bunny that's wrapped up in, you know, like matted fur. And, you know, I had this cool little string stuff that looks kind of ratty. And make like an evil dust bunny. But then I said, I didn't want just one. I said I wanted like a couple. I want like three. Three evil dust bunnies. Now, why did I want three? Well... I thought to myself it would be cool if, you know, we have like a, a show section, as it were, where we do little skits with our puppets. And I thought it would be cool that if I had three that were kind of joined together somehow, 
I could call them the Beastie Bunnies. And I could make them uh, lip sync to like a, a Beastie Boys song, which I thought would be cool. So I have set out to make a trio of dust bunnies called the Beastie Bunnies. And that's what I'm going to walk you through. So first off is how are we going to do this? I don't know. I don't know how I do any of my projects. I just kind of start. So the first things first, I need to figure out a way. My thought was I can just kind of, if I could have like little levers that I could slap, you know, I could make them do, 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 what? Do, 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 you know, kind of have like little arms that operate the, the mouths of the beastie bunnies. Um, and I looked through my stuff and I found these clamps. And I was like, that would work. You know, thinking like, um, my name's MCA, yeah, I got a license to chill. Oh, what you think of the time it is? The time to get ill. That's great. I mean, it's got like a spring clamp return and it's small. And it looks like it has little holes drilled in the end so I could secure it to something. Um, so that's my first step is I have to secure it to something. Well, what are we going to secure it to? Well, I need it to be something that's beefy because, you know, it, it needs to be beefy. Uh, so I opted for, I did a little pre-work design. I opted for putting them on a piece of two by four that I had laying around. And what I did was, is I started by cutting little grooves that I could mount the clamps in. So I would just screw them down into there, and then I would be able to la ba 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 and there'd be three of them. I'm not sure where the other ones are. Uh, oh, yes, I do. So there'd be three of them, and they would be like this. And then I paused, and I thought about it. Well, first of all, I started out with the three rabbits pointing, all pointing in. But that's kind of hard to operate. So what I could do is I could do turn this around so that all of the three rabbits are pointed inward. But that's also hard to operate. <sighs> what to do? What to do, what to do, what to do? So what I decided was I would make, instead of curved lines, I would make straight lines. And would make little indentations that would kind of separate the bunnies. Now, here's something I discovered in the process of getting to that point. When you puppeteer, and when you're learning puppeteering, when you start out, you have a tendency to want to do this. Wah, wah, la, 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 la. Hi, my name is Mike Rab, or my name is Ricky Ticky Tobby, and I am a mongoose. Now, when you see that, you, what you see is the top of the head flopping back like this. And nobody talks like that. They just don't. So, where we have to start is, when you're learning to puppeteer, you have to learn to puppeteer by trying to only move the bottom part, which looks more like this, which is more natural. I mean, there's still some snout movement, but by and large, most of the lip sync comes from moving the bottom jaw. So, I amended what I was planning on doing. My original thought was, I will have them this way, and I will make them talk like this. Ah, da, 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 da. But, that makes them flop their heads back like this. So, I've decided to reverse that, which makes it be like this. Now, the second thing that I noticed is in mounting these, 
uh, I did a test run and I was like la 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 well the first thing I noticed was either I'm gonna have a really long arm to control these or I'm gonna have to take the spring out because these springs come out they're just uh they're wrapped around the screw that joins the two halves together. So I started by taking the spring out, which I will do now. But what I noticed was, is when I attached this and I played with it, la 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 I found that the screw would work loose of the nut and the nut would fall off and then the jaw would fall off. So what I did is when I was mounting these, if you'll notice, the joint where the screw is sits below the level of the wood so that the screw can't ever come out of the joint that makes the jaws work. So awesome. So now we have three bunnies. Uh, I kind of cut little grooves to separate them. And I sanded everything so that it sit well and it would sit well in my hands. Because I imagine it's gonna sit kind of like this. And I would just use my hands to operate it. I'll move this down a bit so you can see. So here I have my trio of bunnies and you know um, I can just you know this is one of the beastie bunnies something like that uh, I will have to work out how to get to the middle one uh, I think there needs to be a wider tab, almost like a T-shaped tab, so I can get to these two easily from either side, but also with an easy little stretch, I can also get to the middle one. See how it's just too far? Um, I did round these corners so that it would fit better in my hands as it sat like this. And basically, you just kind of hold them up to the camera and and if you put it at you know a slightly downward angle see if you lean it back they all kind of open up 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 but if you lean it forward they kind of stay close so i don't know if i have to have some kind of spring closer for it or not i have three rabbits i'm gonna have to develop uh, like some little brain, foam brain uh, patterns to kind of make them a little rounder and also give them some definition because currently they look more like, I don't know, beavers or woodchucks in their current formation. Um, and then we'll cover them with fur and we'll figure out ways to kind of make them look different because they have different personalities. Uh, they won't be a lot different. They'll be a little different from one another. And I don't know. We'll just keep going from there. And I hope you enjoy watching this. Uh, I don't know how much information I covered, but I covered a little bit. And I'll see you next time. Right now, I'm going to go skim the pool and hop inside because it's really hot here in Southern California. All right. This is Mike saying goodbye. If you like the show, like and subscribe. Nice to be in orbit.